Maria and welcome back to my channel. Today we are building something fairly simple, kind of a very unoriginal build. So we are just building a tiny suburban home for a single mom and an infant. And I know what you're thinking right now, a single mom tiny house speed build, really? never seen that before but i'm going to explain how this came came to be but one after another because there's some things i have to talk about with this build so first you see we are not really starting from scratch so we had a given shell because this was actually meant to be an entry for a shell challenge and it was a shell challenge hosted by lil simsy in april i guess so yeah that's some months ago already and i do love to do shell challenges sometimes because I feel some of my best builds I did in the past were actually entries for shell challenges. I mean, this one, I, I will say very openly that this is not one of my best builds or my favorite builds, but yeah, some, some other builds I did for shell challenges turned out pretty nice. I think the fact that you're a little bit restricted with the given shell sometimes really enhances my creativity, so to say, but I actually did not want to take part in a shell challenge for some time because I have already so many unfinished builds in my catalog and I didn't want to add to this. And yeah, so I was actually telling myself not to start a new shell challenge, but because this was a tiny one for a tiny house, I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe I just could give this a try and it, it can't be that hard to finish it in time, right? Because I'm super bad at keeping or sticking to deadlines. So I think for the last couple of shell challenges I did, I could never finish them before the deadline, but I thought with this it worked out. And the fact that I'm now sharing this in December already tells you that this did not happen. So I still wanted to tackle this shell challenge and sometime before she dropped the shell challenge, I also bought the My First Pet Stuff pack, but I hadn't really used it for building so far. So I thought it would be kind of cool to just use the base game and this one pack for this tiny house. Also because I know that Lil Simsy really does love the My First Pet Stuff as all the Sims community does, of course. So yeah, it was just a fun idea. And then it was also shortly after the infant update was released for the Growing Together expansion pack. And yeah, I also really hadn't built anything with this new this new infant stuff that we got in the game. And so I thought I'd combine these two things and wanted to add an infant's room. And so this whole single mom idea came together. Obviously, like I'm also placing like a double bed. You could also have like two parents live in here with their little child. But the thing is that the, my first pet stuff build objects are very, very colorful and they look kind of very stylized. Yeah, they have a very certain style to it. I try to use as many objects from this pack as I could because I wanted to try them out. So the interior, as you can already see, it's turning out very pastely, very colorful. It has a very youthful style to it, I'd say. I don't really know. So in my mind, it made sense that this would be a house for a single mom who is probably also on the younger side so i also named this video like young mom's tiny house because single mom tiny house really sounded so cliche and so like you've already seen one million builds of this kind but yeah i just thought that it was probably a very young mom living here with her first child and yeah, I know some people are playing storylines with, I don't know, teen pregnancy or something. Or you could also play like the big sister challenge in this tiny house. So there could be just a very young adult or a teen who's taking care of her sibling, which in this case is way younger than her. But yeah, there are different ways how you could play in this little house and as I mentioned you could also just move a family in there but because of the style and the way the interior looked it just made sense to me that it would be a young single mom living here. Now I did not finish this shell challenge in time obviously because it's now December so yeah what happened I think my main problem with this was that I did not like the exterior at all I was so unhappy with it I changed it so many times because it looked so boring it was so pale and just had no interest to it and I changed the swatches of the windows so many times and I also placed some base game blinds as shutters and they have not a very great amount of swatches so I don't know I just couldn't make the exterior work. I just was so unhappy with it that I did not finish this build 
I don't know, I didn't want to delete it, but I just kept it in my drafts. I had already recorded the building process because, yeah, even back then I was just wanting to start this channel already. And so I was recording various builds and various building projects I was doing back in the day. So, yeah, I had this recorded and I had the footage. I still had a build, but I didn't really know if I wanted to finish it. And I think it would have remained in my drafts forever if not the Sims team would have decided to make them my first pet stuff go free. So I suppose you've heard of this, but if you have not, I will tell you now that uh, My First Pet Stuff is currently free to download. So you can get it for free until the 9th of January, I think. And you can even download it if you do not have cats and dogs. So you, you can still use most of the stuff even if you do not have cats and dogs. So I think the only things you cannot use is apparently the, the clothes for the different pets that there are in the game. And I mean, it's free. I know it's not one of the best stuff packs by any means. So in Cass, I kind of like the hair that come with this stuff pack, but everything else, at least for me personally, seems pretty useless. But uh, Build Spy stuff has some cute items, some very nice stuff that I'm also using for this build here. It also has some very interesting swatches, so some kind of weird stuff, and I, I really wish that the enclosures for the small pets wouldn't be so colorful and wouldn't have this super specific style, but anyway, so it's free, so if you do not have it now, go grab it. As I mentioned, I got it in April this year, in March, I don't know, which it's it's kind of a little bit annoying because um, I only ever used it twice, I think, for two sims I made or something and then never touched it again. And now it's free. So yeah, I, I just could have waited these few more months to get it. But then again, I'm not too mad because I also didn't buy it for the full price. I bought it while it was on sale and yeah, it still has some nice stuff in it. So I'm not disappointed in any way. So um, just if you do not have it right now, don't miss this opportunity and go download it before the 9th of, of January. So this was actually what made me want to go back to this build and finally finish it because now it, it has become very accessible. So at first I thought it was kind of useless because it's a pack I think not many people have, but now I kind of think that it's accessible for many people and this whole thing with the stuff pack becoming free really made me want to go back to this build and try to figure out the exterior and try to make it work somehow. And I think in the end it turned out quite cute, although as I already mentioned, it's very much not one of my favorite builds. There are definitely better builds I made, but I think it's kind of cute and nice in the end. Also, I keep talking about the exterior also. We are most definitely on the interior right now. And this is another one of my builds where I was just jumping a lot in between decorating the exterior and the interior. And the reason for this was what I have just mentioned. So I was just feeling so uninspired for the exterior and didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. And so instead I kept going to the interior and I think I did the entire bathroom in this part of the video. But now there was like a huge jump and we are suddenly on the exterior and this is the more current footage. So this is me going back to this build and trying to fix the exterior. And what already was very helpful was to cover up this wall in the back with a half wall. So obviously it's a shell challenge and I still wanted to stick to the rules even if the deadline was so long ago, but I didn't want to add any more exterior walls. So I just added the half wall and I changed the wall color to this yellow wooden paneling and I'm also adding a frieze and I'm changing the swatches and I'm also going to add new columns in a second because I didn't really like the columns I'm using here right now because they do not have a lot of swatches and I'm kind of hoping that at some point the Sims team goes back and adds some new swatches to these columns and to other base game build stuff. Because this is obviously a thing they've been doing a lot in the last years. So it's not completely unprobable that this will happen again. And I feel these particular base game columns to um, just have not enough swatches to go with all of the other build stuff. So what I did was that I went into base game uh, live edit objects and I used this wooden beam or wooden column, whatever it is, to decorate the corners of this house. And it worked surprisingly well. It didn't block anything. The only thing was that there were sometimes glitching through into the interior, but I could manage to just 
tweak them in, in a way that this wouldn't happen. And I still think it looks very nice and it adds a little bit of more contrast to the exterior. And I kind of really liked how this looked. They are not entirely even, so they have a little bit of an odd shape but I think it's still worked out. I also changed uh, the shutters, like these fake shutters, to a darker wood tone because, again, I wanted to have more contrast. I think my main problem with the exterior that made me uh, abandon this build was that I found the exterior look too, too pale and too, too bland, just too uninteresting. And I don't know, this color scheme of brown and yellow is definitely not super ideal but I think it looks way better than it looked in the beginning and I'm kind of okay with it now. And after going back to fixing the exterior, I also just continued working on the outside. So we are not going back to the interior until I'm finished with the, the whole outside, with the whole backyard situation, the, the front of the house. So I'm doing the complete exterior first and then I'm going back to the inside and furnishing the rest of the rooms. As I said, so far I only did uh, the bathroom. So I'm, I'm sorry for this very chaotic way this video works, but it's just because I was a little bit stuck on this particular build. So now for the backyard, what I did was I placed some of these, these bushes, these hatches to cover up the fence. And although this is definitely not a big garden. I still spend a lot of time on the landscaping. I wonder if this is just something that I generally do in my build. So even if it's not a big build, I kind of manage to spend a huge amount of time on the garden and stuff. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to create this little terrace. It's going to change a lot. So I was very undecisive even here. I at first did not exactly know what I want to do. In the end, I'm going to delete these floor tiles I just placed and just going to apply some terrain paint because I always feel it looks a little bit nicer and more natural. And yeah, I'm just placing lots and lots of bushes and just trying to create a very nice garden. And here I was also trying to create this little pathway out of these live added object stones from base game. I do this a lot because it's just a very nice way to create an interesting looking pathway. And it also takes me some time, so I had to shorten it a lot because it was very, very tedious to watch. And even while I was already technically finished with this path, I still always went back to do some minor tweaks and to just rotate the single stones just a little bit. And it took me a lot of time and I didn't want to bother you with showing it all. So yeah, it's probably still way too long, but it's slowly coming together and I'm also going to place a little bit of terrain paint under it so it all looks nice and realistic and natural. And also the terrain paint took me a lot of time because I'm so perfectionist about this. I already mentioned it in the last build where I did landscaping, but yeah. And now the favorite thing, or probably the favorite thing I've done in this back garden is the custom sand pit that I made. And the way to do this is that you create a basement and then you take one of the big base game planters and you just size it up by one, I think, and then you raise it up from the basement. So you do not even need the tool mod for this. You just take the planter, you raise it up until only the wooden frame is sticking over the ground and the rest, like the earth in the planter, is covered in the basement. And then you just paint the terrain with the sand terrain paint of your choice. And what I did additionally to this is that I placed these sand piles or sand heaps from base game world live edit objects and these are technically just these dirt piles you have around the world where your sims can dig to find collectibles and stuff and you can size them up and just place them in the sand pit and I like to do this to make this look a little bit more three-dimensional and give a little bit more of texture so to say and I think it even still works sims can still dig up collectibles and I also placed one of the base game outdoor tables with the parasol and I just also raised it up from the basement so it looked like there was just this parasol to protect the little child while playing. And you still do not technically need the tool mod for this, but I decided to use it to tilt 
the parasol a little bit so it would look a little bit more realistic that it was just stuck into the ground to protect the playing child. And then I also placed some actual planters but they are not going to stay there so again I was a little bit undecisive on where I wanted to place stuff on the backyard and I'm actually going to shift the whole sandpit situation to the left side. So yeah this was very tedious and I wish I had decided on this earlier but then I, I just really didn't like where it was. So in the end I'm just going to push it over to the left side and I'm going to place the planters more towards the house and then I'm also going to place a lounger and a table, I don't know. And you're going to see I'm going to place so many flowers and plants in the backyard so it still looks very lush and very inviting. Now I did not fully play test the sand pit so my sim could walk into this area because the planter is technically not on the ground floor so it shouldn't block her sim's path. I have not really tested if the child is able to play in there but I suppose it can so it should be able to use all of the toys. If it can't it's probably because it's blocked by the sand piles so you might have to delete them but it, it should work. There shouldn't be an issue with this. Now everything else in this house is fully play tested again, but for the sand pit it was a little bit difficult also because playing with infants is a little bit annoying sometimes. So yeah, I'm then just continuing to place more stuff in the backyard. So there's a little seating area, there's a barbecue area. At first I was placing a fruit bowl on the dining table, but I'm ending up not leaving it there. I'm going to delete it in the end because it was kind of blocking the table a little bit. So if your sims want to place like a notebook there to do some work because the house unfortunately does not have a study area so the only place where you could technically place some sort of laptop was on this outside dining table and it doesn't work if there's this fruit bowl there so I'm going to delete this and yeah as I already mentioned I'm placing so many plants and so many flowers so it really looks very lush and inviting and I think the backyard is actually my favorite part of this whole build so it looks really really nice especially when the sun is shining on it and you have these planters to grow some vegetables and herbs and you can do a barbecue and I think it looks nice and I was actually kind of happy with it. I'm also kind of afraid that my neighbors can hear absolutely everything I'm saying because it's currently like they should be asleep because it's currently 3 a.m. in the morning. I know I also should be asleep but yeah my, my sleeping schedule is a little bit off to say the least and I want to have this done at some point because I was hoping to finish this last week and it would actually be so nice to have one video out per week but I think just because of how long it takes me to finish something and how slow I'm with building and editing this is just impossible for me to achieve but yeah I just really want to finish this video and so I'm just here at 3am in the morning and doing a voiceover but it, it's okay I'm not actually tired so I wouldn't be able to sleep anyway. I should definitely do something about this but whatever I don't know why I started talking about this but yeah. Anyway I'm just placing some outdoor lights here so you can see something at night and then I'm just adding some last touches to this backyard so I think I'm also adding some decorations to this little table next to the lounger. I just put a children's book there because I imagined that maybe the mom would have read it to her child while the child was playing in the sandpit, I don't know. And of course I also had to add this little cookie jar because I think I'm adding this in all of my builds and every time I do not really know what else to add I'm kind of adding this cookie jar. I wish we had this jar in a closed version as well so you wouldn't see what's inside and it would be a little bit more versatile but yeah I, I would say it's one of my most used base game objects. And then I'm decorating this little back porch and yeah I was for example rotating a broom from base game debug that I placed there and yeah it's not a functional space I just put some decorative items there but I think it looks kind of realistic so I just placed some tools you would need for gardening, a planting pot, so just things I thought would make sense to place on a little backyard like this. And I'm also placing this little food box from also debug from my first pet stuff because 
I, I thought that maybe it was bird's food. I don't know, but I just thought it was cute and it was a nice opportunity to use another item from this stuff pack. And I'm even placing these little stones also from base game because I really wanted to make it look like people are working on this table and using it for, for planting and gardening and flower arranging or whatever. But as I mentioned, it's not actually a functional space. Now, I think the last thing that I'm doing on the outside is that I'm decorating the front of the house, that I'm just adding more flowers small plants just to make it look beautiful and lush and yeah I think it turned out really beautiful it again took me some time I shortened it a lot but yeah you can see how I approach this how it's coming together also a short change of subject while you're watching me placing all these flowers because the sims 4 for rent has finally released and I did not get it so far but I saw a lot of early access videos and I'm still kind of intrigued by it so it still seems to be a very nice pack, at least from a builder's perspective, of course. And if you did get a pack, what do you think about it? Do you like it? Have you played with it so far? Yeah, what's uh, your opinion on it? I'm curious to know. And also, I'm not sure when I will get the pack. I'm still going to continue furnishing my apartment building, of course, which you could see in my last video. And I think the next video that will be out will also be an apartment from this apartment building. So I'm still trying to finish this build. So at some point it will be available and you can also use it with the new multi-unit system. So back to our build right now, because what I'm doing at the side of this build is that I'm taking one of the base game debug plants and I'm rotating it using tool and I'm creating some sort of ivy at the back of this build. Now I didn't come up with this myself but someone mentioned this on Instagram and pointed out that this plant can be rotated which I did not know and I wanted to try this out here and it really looks way better than the other debug ivy that there is in base game and it's just a really cool way to add some more details to a build even in base game. I'm afraid that I really cannot remember who posted this so I cannot give proper credit but I just want to mention it. I saw someone else post about this and then kind of wanted to try this myself. Now getting to the interior of this build you will notice that there's some sort of weirdness going on with the floor plan and this was of course also because this was a shell challenge build so i had to stick to the given shape of this house and it led to some interesting situations so for example Next to the kitchen, we have this weird triangular bump out and I went completely creative and original and just made it a chimney, which kind of feels a little bit like cheating, but I really didn't know what else to do with this weird triangular shape. Now, obviously, there's not a fireplace in this house and I know some people will be annoyed by this and usually I always try to place a fireplace where there is a chimney. However, here it didn't make any sense and so in the end I just placed the stove in front of this chimney and yeah, maybe the rain hood is somehow connected to the chimney, which I know doesn't make a lot of sense, but yeah, maybe there was a fireplace in the past or maybe they just built a chimney for decoration. I really don't know, but I think it was okay. Again, it was not the most most creative idea and yeah I wish I would have come up with a better idea on how to use this triangle but I did not so it is a chimney now. Also another interesting decision I made for the interior is that I placed the couch from my first pet stuff in the kitchen and I was really set on using this couch because it's probably the object I was most excited about about the stuff pack excited is probably a, a big word but I think it's the most interesting object from this pack or one of the most interesting objects and I really wanted to use it in this build. Now obviously this couch takes up a lot of space so there's not a dining table in the kitchen so your sims will either have to sit down on the couch to eat or they will have to go outside to the backyard. I at least could manage to fit a toddler chair or infant chair in there. Do you say high chair? Is it called high chair? So a high chair is in here so you can try different sorts of food with your infant but yeah apart from this the other sims will just have to sit on the couch because I really really wanted to use this object so I'm sorry and yeah the tv is on the kitchen counter which is also interesting and I think I've never done this before but it's functional and your sims can still cook and yeah they can also watch tv while they're eating 
on the couch. So everything's completely fine and normal. Well, we are almost done with the living and dining area and then heading over to the bedroom. And I think in this room you can really see what I was talking about in the beginning, that this interior is really quite girly and colorful and it will get even more colorful. So I at first wasn't really sure how exactly I wanted to decorate it, but it's going to be very colorful and very pastel-y. So I think to go back to the subject I was talking about before, about the, the weird aspects of this build, I think the weirdest part is probably that to get to the back porch, you have to go to the bathroom and you probably noticed this if you watched carefully before that the door to the back porch is in the bathroom and I know this is not ideal at all but then again I don't think it's super unrealistic because for example my best friend was complaining recently how in her mom's apartment the balcony is attached to the bathroom and it doesn't make any sense because why would you go out to the balcony from your bathroom and obviously also the balcony door is made of glass so you have a really big window in your bathroom which you do not necessarily want so yeah things like this do happen in real life obviously we want to avoid something like this in the sims but in this case i had to decide if i wanted to place the door in the infant's room or in the bathroom and i don't know about you but i think i would not want there to be an additional door leading to the outside from my sims infant's room because I keep forgetting to lock doors in the sims and even while I was playtesting the infant was all around the place and I would neither want the child to accidentally get out the house without me or my sim noticing nor would I want that other sims who for whatever reason come to the house from the backyard would enter the house through my child's room. So yeah, in this case it really seemed to make more sense to just place the door to the back porch in the bathroom instead and to make sure that the child um, is in a little bit more of a safe environment. Now the bedroom is almost done and the last room we are doing is the infant's room that I was just talking about. It's a very very small room. I was actually surprised that when I was playtesting it everything worked out because at some point I had to rotate the bed a little bit because otherwise my sims wouldn't have been able to add the little toy to it, the little application, I don't remember how it's called. So I had to move the bed and then I thought that it would be blocked by the dresser but in the end it all worked out really fine. So it's a tiny room, perfect for an infant. Also a toddler would still fit in there so because you can just convert the infant's bed to a toddler bed but I think as soon as the toddler ages up to a child you might have to go find a bigger house because you could technically fit a three tile bed in there but it would feel very much like sleeping in a closet or something so yeah you might have to find another home for your sims so your child will get a bit of a bigger room. Also one last thing I should mention about this room is that the chair I'm going to place in one of the corners is not going to stay there. It was kind of glitching into the wall. So in the end, I went and replaced it for a base game armchair. And you will see which armchair I chose in the screenshots in the end. It's actually the one that I first picked out, but then I'm taking a base game chair instead and in the end I'm going to swap them out but you won't see it in the video you will only see it in the screenshots in the end and I think that's almost it with the whole build so thank you so much for sticking around until the end of the video also to all of the new subscribers who have joined since my last video I was so surprised and excited and speechless to see how many people have watched this video. I really didn't think it would be that well received, but of course I was I was super happy about it. So if you're new here, welcome. I'm really happy to, to have you around and to have you join my channel. So if you like this build, you can find it up on the gallery. My ID is Latalba Volante and the name is also the same on my social. So you can also find me on Tumblr and and Instagram. You will also find all of these information down in the description box. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you haven't already, it would be so much appreciated. I hope to be back very soon with a new video. As I already mentioned, it's going to be another apartment renovation in my apartment building, which you already know from the last video. And in the meantime, I wish you a wonderful week and happy second Advent Sunday if you celebrate 
great Christmas. And yeah, I'm hoping you're having a great time. And bye. Thank you.